Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, it's a real pleasure to be here. And to have so many people here, people who are seriously committed in this area and people who have roles and responsibilities which can uh, make a real difference. Son, uh, well, we've just spent today, uh, part of today at least, talking about the, uh, the, the next five-year strategy for Son. Uh, where we've come, uh, there was a, a reflection that when Son was started five years ago, perhaps nobody could have considered uh, the progress that has been made. Uh, I remember on that very first uh, day when it was launched five years ago, the, the thought was that maybe seven or eight countries might become part of what was called the early risers, countries that had perhaps enough vision uh, to, to, to take this step into, into committing to make serious improvements in nutrition. At the end of the first year, there were 20, over 20, and now 55 countries have committed to the principles of SUN, 55 countries, plus the Indian state of Maharashtra. And crucially, these countries contain 90 million of the stunted children in the world. And as we had our, our meeting today, and uh, Tony Lake, said he'd been at a, con a meeting this morning where he was about to go in and say and repeat the, the I suppose, the fairly common statistic that there's over 160 million uh, children in the world. And somebody told him before he was going in, your brief is wrong, and it's now less than 160 million. So it is the case that progress is being made. It's been particularly made in a number of different countries, more rapidly than others. And we have to learn and we have to, to see what the explanation for that is and how other countries could, could, uh, could, could, could maybe learn from that. That is one of the really key elements of SUN, I think the notion of sharing and learning experience. And what has been developed over the last number of years is a, a huge focus on the country level, getting the political commitment, uh, getting the networks and the multi-state actors working together at country level, and getting also uh, the, 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 you know sharing experiences across across countries, whether that be in terms of what we can learn from each other in advocacy terms, or what we can learn in terms of developing the functional capacities uh, in countries uh, to to make progress. So we went through at the end in the second half of 2014 a significant evaluation of the SUN movement, the independent comprehensive evaluation, which was uh, completed in January of this year. And that evaluation was put out then for comment among from uh, the stakeholders across the SUN movement. And arising out of the, discu the discussion from that, and with the help of, of uh, s some uh, committees that were, uh, committees that were, were, were looking to the future, with the lead group of the Sun, we have now come up with a vision for the next five years of the Sun movement. It's very much building on what was there already, uh, but it's, it's putting a greater emphasis on moving from advocacy to implementation uh, to results. That's a key element. Another important area is reflecting what Lawrence has said is the need to get more resources. Uh, there's no question that uh, nutrition needs more resources. And that's not just more resources from the donor community, but the more domestic mobilization uh, of resources. And the other areas, where other areas where I think the sun, the next five years of sun will be somewhat different than the, than the current one, is I think a greater emphasis on women's empowerment uh, and on generally the, the, the acceptance that if we are to uh, really make progress, a focus on adolescent girls and young women of childbearing age, adequate nutrition from them is, is, um, is important. So in all of this, I think the Sun Movement is, is part of a wider uh, effort to, to gain, to make real progress in nutrition. And that's where I think the Global Nutrition Report is such an important uh, development. It is truly amazing that it took until 2014 to have a global nutrition report. Uh, but I think that one last year was a very good start. I think this year it certainly builds on it. And as I was listening to Lawrence there explaining so expertly what's in the report, it struck me that what this report is really doing 
it's, it's now becoming uh, a bearer of inconvenient truths. And so it's indeed, to, to use the great phrase, it's uh, afflicting the comfortable. And it's, it's trying to make sure that not only do we identify the, the huge costs of, 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 under, of undernutrition and increasingly of overnutrition, but it's also beginning to, to edge towards finding solutions. And that's what really struck me about this, this report. It's coming up with, I would say, a practical menu of uh, practical agenda uh, for, for solutions uh, for, the, for the problems that we have, as reflected in the set of call for actions at the end. But I think it does come back fundamentally to what Grasse Michel said at the very beginning. There has to be a deep understanding at the political level that nutrition is important, and that importance needs to be reflected in policy priority and in resource allocation. And I see the Global Nutrition Report as, you know, as probably the key vehicle that can be used for this as we go forward for the next number of years. And the Rio rendezvous uh, where uh, commitments are set, not just for resources, but for targets. I was very struck by that. That can be, can be key. So that's, uh, having sprung that on me without any warning, <laughs> uh, I will now move to moderate and we, we get the involvement of the audience. Thank you very much indeed.